So here we are, we're looking at a box. Let's press Q and we'll use hard ops to use sphere cast to turn this into a sphere. And now we're looking at it from the front. And let's pretend we're hypothetically under object orientation. And your first thought is, hey, I'm gonna just use this dot, switch over to circle, and just cut through the shape. Why did my cut go wrong? Well, let's take a moment to talk about that. So for this, I'm going to turn on release lock. And what that means is that whenever you draw a shape, it will automatically pause it for you, allowing you to reflect upon it before extrusion. So let's just turn this on and we're going to draw our shape and press tab for live. And we see after we rotate our view that our shape isn't actually centered on the object. It's actually oriented to the normal vector. So sometimes curvature can work against you whenever it comes to working with box cutter. So let's just right click and cancel that. So what we want to do is choose a line to view and activate grid. And so now we're going to look at it from front and just jump off the center, release the cursor. And here we see our shape is oriented to the view and not to the shape. And we can begin the extrusion process. So I will just press E and here we are looking at our shape. In fact, I'm going to lower the diameter of the circle a bit and we'll just press spacebar. So your next question is, hey, why does this look so terrible? So for that, to answer that question, let's press Alt V and use hard ops to just turn on wireframe and look at the shape that you've given it and look at what you've done to it. So Blender is by no means a CAD program and you're not dealing with curves and nerves, you're dealing with polygons. And so whenever you're cutting two flows into each other, curvature against curvature is going to definitely result in artifacting happening on the surface. And so you have to be crafty with how you deal with certain things. In fact, to really show how you can solve this in seconds, let's look at our modifiers. And so right now our levels viewport is set to three. Let's jump it up to four. Here we see the roundness is being taken a lot better. Let's jump it up to five. And now we see it's actually being handled a lot better. However, now the issue comes down to the cylinder itself. So let's press Q, mod scroll toggle to bring this back through bolt scroll. And we'll just press Q and let's first sharpen it. And by sharpening it, we have our control tilde set to apply crease and apply seam. So that way, whenever we do run sharpen under operations, it's actually hardening this face and this face and so if we put a level of subdivision on it, we see that our circle works out a lot better. And so now there's a subdivision on the cylinder. There's a subdivision on the sphere. And let's actually lower the subdivisions and look at it. So this is what we were starting with. This is with our, cil our cylinder a little bit more rounded. Still a little bit of artifacting. We jumped this up to four. Definitely a little bit less artifacting. We jumped this up to five. It's going to look fine. So. The other thing that you want to look at, you know, just in case you don't want to jump your geometry up so high, is the ability to weld certain points that are near these points like you're seeing here. So if we uh, press Q, we can go under modifier weld, and just by rolling the wheel, we're able to begin welding depending on their closeness to the edges. And that was able to mitigate some of the damage and allow us to somewhat continue progressing with this model. However, at some point you will need to deal with the flow that's happening with these two areas. So I just wanted to do a video talking about how to do a frontal cut and also discuss some of the basics about Boolean management.